Welcome back to another Geek Watt video, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you the best $500 gaming build, as much GPU power and as much CPU power as you can get for $500. So, without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So, the first um, the first part in the list is the the um, CPU. Now, this really is the bare minimum for something like this build, but by no means is it underpowered. It's the Athlon X4 860K. It's a quad core CPU, which means it meets the requirements of pretty of literally every single game. Unlike the Pentium G3258, which is a only a dual core model, it's got a 3.7 gigahertz unlocked clock speed. And I, I own I own this, um, the CPU myself, and I can tell you that I've got up to four and a half gigahertz uh, at, at some points on the stock cooler which is insane it is a superb chip and then um, with the, only a 95 watt tdp for 73 dollars uh, with a quad core cpu it's absolutely brilliant for the job the graphics card is the G uh, is the gigabyte gtx 960 now this is not only gigabytes um cheapest 960 but it is um the whole of nvidia's range it's their cheapest 960 and that is just purely because that, that's what would fit in the budget and at the end of the day this is a bang for the book build but if you did want to spend another 15 20 30 dollars you can get some really badass looking gt um gpus and um, gtx 960s as well so it's a two gigabyte um G it's got a two gigabyte gddr5 um v a vram and frame buffer it's got 120 watt tdp a, a dual link and a single link dvi display port and hdmi connectors which means it supports 5k and g-sync and it's got an onboard H.265 encoder, which means you can record all your games and have all the um, and only take a 5% performance hit in games, and it'll only use the power of your GPU, which is brilliant. Recording games up to the resolution of 4 and 5K with GeForce Experience. The RAM I've gone for is a, a nice amount of RAM again. It's um, eight gigabytes. It's two four gigabyte DIMMs. Now, if you did want to upgrade to sixteen gigs later on, I'd recommend just getting the single eight gigabyte DIMM. But for this build, the best bang for the buck and it's dual all dual channel configuration. Two four gig DIMMs. You can either get two white, two black, two blue, or two red DIMMs in a range of colours for just sixty two dollars. The storage um, it gives you loads, loads, loads of capacity and a bit of upgradability as well later on. It's the Seagate Barracuda. You may have heard of the Western Digital Caviar Blue. They're both basically both the same thing with ex pretty much exact specs and exact performance, uh, apart from the fact that this one is cheaper with uh, one terabyte capacity, um, 7,200 RPM, based on the SATA 36 gigabit per second architecture. Um, I was originally going to go for a Western Digital Black, which combines a much faster SSD and a, um, a, a traditional hard drive into one. But I did, I, I did sort of for the best bang for the book, just go for this one terabyte hard drive. And I would recommend upgrading, um, grabbing yourself a 120 gig SSD later on for between 30 and, um, and 60, 60 dollars for the cheapest ones. So yeah, that's the perfect hard drive and storage solution for this build. The motherboard I went for was another trusty favourite of mine and one that I personally own. It's the MSI A78M E35 and that's what I got the um, the Athlon X for 860K's overclock on. It's got USB 3 and it's got dual channel memory support which we are going to take full advantage of. It's got onboard PCIe 3 um, PCIe 3.0 connector to get the latest out of your G shiny GTX 9, um, 960. It's got um, a range of a mass of um, uh, SATA 6 second port, SATA 36 give it a second and, and and raid support on there as well and then um, as the zero enforcement enforcement in zero enforcement zero insertion force socket a becky pardon from amd which means you have to put no pressure when installing your cpu perfect motherboard for 56 dollars the, um, the case I've gone for is the Fractal Design Core 1100 or Core 1100 if you like. It's got a uh, one front panel USB 3 and one front panel USB 2 power reset hard drive LEDs as well as a um, power uh, not <laughs> as well as a headphone and a microphone jack. It's the um, successor to the Core 1000 which was extremely popular and this has got a nice um, renewed overhaul design and for $35 you really cannot go wrong. And the power supply I've gone for is the Corsair CX600M. It's a 600 watt model, um, which gives us around double um, what we actually need for this build, which means you've got enough uh, enough expandability to upgrade to a couple of extra hard drives if you needed, an SSD and a GTX 960. Again, in SLI if you so desired, um, because you just got you've just got that much um, wattage to play around with, and a new C shiny CPU if you wanted a um, a more power hungry one. Um, it's the full ATX ATX size power supply, which is no problem for the case, and an 80 plus bronze certification means it'll stay above 80% efficiency at all times. Uh, you can mount it upside, uh, you can mount it up or down, which means it'll 
will draw fresh air in from um, from from below your case or from inside your case for forty eight dollars semi modular, which means you won't have loads of cables everywhere. It is a brilliant option, um, brilliant option for this build. And finally, one thing I really recommend you picking up, obviously because it's mine, is the um, the Geekwatt Guide to PC Part Choices. So say there's a, a, a unique build you want to buy and you want to tailor a build like this to yourself, and then grab that for around a dollar on um, on, um, on on Google Play at the moment, and um, and and have yourself a bit of a read of it. It's a, it's, it's only around a dollar. You'll be able to read through it in um, in a couple of minutes and um, and learn a bunch of things that you didn't already know. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to like, comment and rate and please do subscribe I can't get my words out today because it really does help the channel and we will see you in the next Geek What video